Well, I could uh, first thing get your name and how you spell it, sir. Oh, well, it's Arnold Hobby. H A U B E. Hobby. H A U B E. E. Yeah. H A U B E. All right, thank yeah. you, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're you're a traditional carver here. Um, yeah, I carve mostly boats, <laughs> mostly model boats. You also carve the uh, the paddles, I believe. Yeah, I was ordered to do that and uh, um, make it a whole bunch of them with kind of a, a, a tackle. <laughs> and I had a hard time with it, you know. And I had to do them in the, uh, what you call that, and um, I forgot how long it was. It, it, it took probably a year anyway, but it, it, it just uh, it a little. Oh, really not quite a year anyway, but uh, it simply went to raise the totem poles in, uh, in uh, the, it sounded like the uh, um, Norwegian festival, and, but uh, things got switched around and the totem poles got done kind of early, so uh, <clears throat> I only had a, a the, what you call the paddles uh, carved out, but they didn't, I didn't finish it. That's what I didn't do, so. I, I reached the age where I could retire, so I couldn't, I couldn't do life. And then I started working on them again, so. And um, I started sanding them down and doing everything I can with them, and I finally got to that point where I could start drawing those designs on them, and, and, um, so I, that's what I started to do, but painting them was the, the hardest part because I had to paint it on a round surface and both sides of the paddles were round and I had to hold the paddles steady and that's what, and that's what made it hard for me. So I had to take my time. <laughs> it was nervous, it was, it was kind of, uh, how would you use that word, uh, kind of, you could, you got to be real careful and real slow with the way you paint it because you fly off line and you, red cedar and it stains the wood so deep that you can't get it out you know, once the paint's in there, you know. So I had to be really careful. careful. The eye part and the, the tongue part was the, the worst part so I had to, had to do. The, the inside of the eyeball, it's just the one that had to leave, leave the wood color on and that's what made it really I had to be really careful with it, you know, and other than that, it was uh, the black part of the, the head was really okay, and those two other colors on the, the ear part and in the nose part it was, was the one that was really hard. I couldn't, I had to be real careful cause, and be careful with that uh, colors. And, and other than that, it was, uh, it was going pretty good, but I, it was still too slow for me. <laughs> really slow. <laughs> anyway. Well, uh, talk to me about this totem pole. You're, you're native. Uh, yeah. What, what does this mean to you? Oh, um, this, to me, this is very special because uh, right here in Petersburg, we have no such designs of, at all of the native people. What? We had a lot of, you had around, when I was a little boy, we had around, 200 to 300 people, native people that used to live here. They call it Singley Alley now, but it was Indian Street. And there was, uh, there was a lot of native people in this area, right here, just right here. But the native people would stay in one group right at uh, from the, the 1920s on up, and they used to either go back, go back to a regular village or go in, um, other places by by the canyon and stay there, but when Indian Village was formed, a lot of native people started staying around this area, around here, and they, that was a long time ago. But as the years went by, <clears throat> it was uh, it was kind of um, what would you call it? Uh, the native, the native group had to stay along by their own self, you know. They wouldn't, they wouldn't merge with the, with the other groups, with the, the Scandinavians or the, or the uh, white people. And it was really, it was really uh, 
so, something because we are, us we are usually stuck together native to young young kids that way it was for us but slowly, slowly but surely it start we start merging with them when I, by the time I was like a teenager and I hit 21 and that age they were almost mixing up all, all, all together back in the back in the 60s there a lot of people coming from south and working in the canneries and, and uh, we would uh, they would merge with us and then we got along pretty good with them pretty soon the, the other town people they, they start to understand that and they, they, we started merging together really we really got corresponded with them that them days you know right now we uh, um, we merge together really easy now, nowadays you know but anyway um, <coughs> Petersburg has never had any kind of Indian design like we used to go to the house to try to use some in uh, PIA, Petersburg Indian Association, but it was kind of leery, you know, because they were saying that maybe somebody would come around and just tear it down, you know. But this totem pole, I think, I think it will change everything, everybody's idea about Native people, the people that are being talked tonight, you know, and uh, they'll explain what the totem pole means to, to everybody in this town. And, I think Petersburg is the only town that doesn't have the native native uh, culture of any kind. Like Petersburg's the only one, and uh, a lot of natives here. But, so it, it must be about a hundred, maybe hundred fifty, something like that. Native groups left around here. And a lot of the elders now are passed on, and there's only about three elders left. I think that's that really really old people now and it was really and I think that's what uh, the people of PIA Peace for Green Association want to put up is that uh, the native native people of this town has got to uh, it's got to realize and the, what these people of Petersburg has got to realize that the native group was always always here and they helped they helped work in the canneries and stuff back during the turn of the century and, and I think things things will change if, once the totem pole is up and everything will be uh, uh, there's a lot of a lot of people that are be watching the totem pole up they'll, they'll realize what it means the totem pole means itself and uh, Petersburg I think Petersburg will, will change a little bit of uh, like, it's lucky the two poles are together because they were going to separate them, you know, one 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 place and one the other place in some place. So it was great that they have they have them both together, so you'll have two clans together. My clan is on it. Mine is the eagle and wolf. I'm from my my clan is the Yanyedi and Taku Taku Inlet. My mom was born in Douglas, but. The native group that was that was uh, transferred to Douglas was originally from uh, Talco Inlet. I think it was in the turn of the century when they they moved the whole tribe. They wanted to move the tribes from the inlet and kind of the salmon. There's a big salmon run every year over there, so the, the government wanted to get a hold of that place and and uh, fish use it for fishing. And so. And by the turn of the century, most of the natives from Taku uh, Inlet are transferred into Douglas. And I think it was a 19, 1913, or no, 19, 1916, 17 or 18 is when Douglas Taku Village burned down. And my mom was still a pretty small girl when that uh, village was burned up. So. A lot of the people that used to live there now are lived in Juno. And they lived in the villages, in Juno and Ock Bay and whatever that was there then. And a lot of them transferred to Angoon, and, uh, Huna, and Klokwan, Sitka. A lot of the, a lot of the top food tribes were all, all scattered all over southeastern Alaska. 
anyway, uh, part, part of this, uh, my group is, there's a few of us here. I mean, my mom and some people from uh, Hawk Bay tried, started living right in Juno, right in Juno Village, around the turn of the century or something like that. I can't, it's not really, my mom was born in Douglas and she moved to, uh, mom, her mom passed away, so she went to school in a missionary school in uh, up north and she grew up there and she came back home to about 17, 16, 17 years old and she didn't know much of her tribe and all she knew was about the eagle and the wolf and, and she didn't know the house clan, I don't know, I don't know about that either. So. All I could say that I can't uh, <clears throat> say anything about my mom's uh, origin and tribe, tribal thing. Like anyway, uh, this totem pole here represents all the people that were between Cake, Pierre, and Rango. And all the people that lived over here in Petersburg, the native group, were not originally from here. A lot of them were from Juno, a lot of them from Sitka. They worked in the canneries, for shrimp cannery, winter time. A lot of Filipinos were here too, and in that time during the 30s, 30s and 40s, until the war was over. And by 1950, all the Filipino groups start to merge. They start to go back to Juno and go back to logging, whatever they were doing, mining, or whatever. My dad stayed. There was a few Filipinos that stayed, that uh, made their home here in Petersburg. So I am, I am half Filipino, you know, the Visayan tribe in uh, Philippine Islands. My dad, my stepdad is, is a different tribe, my real dad. And uh, anyway, uh, <clears throat> this origin between this totem pole here will be always uh, a reminder of how the people how the people are <clears throat> of Petersburg and, and it'll be really something to see these uh, people just looking at around here and seeing Petersburg having totem poles around <laughs> and that's going to be really, uh, really, uh, really great for, uh, I mean, this, this the town of Petersburg stuff. Two totem poles in Petersburg? <laughs> that, that, to me that's going to be really something anyway. Yeah, that's all I got to say. How old are you, sir? Uh, 62. And, how, and where, are you, where were you born? Over here in Petersburg. Did you live here your whole life? Yeah, I was here. I spent about 10, 15 years out of town, but I always came back. You know. That's about all I, I did. And I did a lot of fishing and worked in various coal storages, and mostly coal storages after that. And I always came, seemed to back. Every nine months, every time I left town, it's about nine months I've come back home. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been carving? Oh, I started in, um, let's see, 19, 1970. I started carving model boats. I started that, and I didn't touch that one boat for a long time because I made a mistake on it. And uh, I was trying to correct it. I couldn't figure out how to do it, so, but. I started fooling around with it, and then I found, I found out some shortcuts on how to repair model things like that that I, I make mistakes on. And I learned different ways of carving boats. Now it's, it's a lot easier than one solid piece, you know. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great thing, you know. If, if you're not disturbed, you'll go on it. But if somebody bothers you and you're... Uh, and you're uh, <clears throat> Like if somebody wants me to build a model boat, you know, and, and they want it in a certain time, the, the idea of b doing that, you know, is uh, I get thrown off balance real quick, you know, because I'm a, like they say, articulate. That's what you talk about, being articulate. <laughs> and uh, it'll, it'll throw you off because if you're, if you're consciously on it, you know what I mean, consciously, being asked about it, you get kind of nervous at doing it, you know. You got to do it on your own time and when you feel relaxed and you keep thinking about it. But if you're not thinking about it and you're just uh, 
and um, you want to do something else, sometimes it'll take maybe a year or two for, to build one boat, because I don't like to rush anything like that. You know? Because when I was a kid, I used to, I used to uh, do drawing, and I did a lot of racing <laughs> when I used to draw. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what makes me like that, being articulate to doing something and do, doing it right. I still can't do it right when I when I draw pictures. <laughs> I still do it. I still do a lot of racing. <laughs> uh, were you talking about uh, people knowing what the totem pole means? Explain to me the significance of it. What is it? What does the totem pole mean? Well, it means uh, it means mostly uh, you know uh, about the native groups of all southeastern Alaska, you know, and of all the different different clans. So, and this totem pole, it represents all the clans, all the clans in southeastern Alaska. Was, and, uh, and that's what it means. I think that's what it'll come to. Uh, it, it, it almost shows the whole nation of southeastern Alaska. That's what it'll show, represent, you know. And uh, how the people got here through their, uh, through their canoes and that. There's, there's one pole there that's got a canoe on it with a man in the front. You, you'll see it on there, you know. You, you can see it on that second pole. Anyway, you know. So, um, what, that's what, that's what will make the, most of the native people in here proud, you know. When people from different areas too will see it, all the, all the different clans that are in there. There's not one clan that's missing among, among that, on that pole. Explain to me about clans. What what are clans? Or different uh, different uh, like eagles, eagles and raven and wolf and so you take to, uh, like uh, you get uh, wolf and eagle is one clan, you know. Wolf and uh, raven and killer whale, I guess, and or wolf or I mean wolf and raven, I guess. I'm not I'm not really acquainted with that, you know. Not really. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything else you can think of that you might like to talk about, about this? Oh, um, why, why do you think uh, this needs to be done for the young people? Oh, that, uh, yeah, that's, that's one thing that's going to be great is that the young people will understand because if they know their clan, you know, they'll see that on, their, on the totem pole. And, and that's what makes it great for even the young people, you know. Even the, the half breeds and the half half uh, Filipinos or whatnot, you know, that that are that all they've got the clan in them, you know. If the parents know the clan and they're represented in there, and the, the elders are the ones that got to tell them, you know. There'll be a lot of maybe a lot in the future that won't know their clan, because okay? a lot of them are passing away, you know. Cause a lot of young kids nowadays they don't know their original clan. A lot of them, they're not married. They're married to uh, <clears throat> to uh, white people, and they don't know. They don't really know their clan. Okay? And uh, a, lot, a lot of them, they won't even mention anything about clan. You know? But sure, it is going to be. Uh, some people might be able to follow follow, follow it back. You know. For the clan goes. Um, that's where I. That's where I look at. Uh, like my, my like my nephew, I told him my, our clan, you know, wolf, wolf and eagle, and look, look at me. He says, really? Oh, oh, okay, your your clan is young lady. <laughs> and he, wow, <laughs> he, he didn't know it, you know. <laughs> She's got a little bit Elliot in him, and a little bit German. It's got work five different bloods in him, <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> so what does the totem pole do? Oh, it's it's something like, uh, it's uh, something like a monument. It, it, it's a living monument, like you might call it, you know, because all the clans are in there. It, uh, like this uh, one man that had a dinner up the a &B hall. It's a living thing, okay? This long since standing, it's a living thing, because all the animals, all the clans are in there. Okay. It, it's, a, it's a living thing from the southeast of natives, all the native groups in, in southeastern Alaska. So it's a living thing, that's, that's why. 
he says. And you always got to kind of respect it, you know. You come by, it, especially the native people, you know, put a little bit of respect, you know. And be honest with it, be honest with it, and then you'll feel it when it goes up. The native group will feel it, you know. And that's why they have a ceremony right after it's raised to dance, dance with it, dance for it, you know. And uh, that's about all that I can think of with the totem pole. Okay, first thing, find your name and how you spell it, please. Tommy Joseph, T-O-M-M-Y-J-O-S-E-P-H. Okay, and uh, you, you carved this? You soul carver this? No, I, I started this project with uh, Fred Beltran, who was my a partner on the job in, in the beginning. And how long did it take? Is that in there? Uh, there. Roughly three months for... You're going to go out. Okay, go ahead. Roughly three months for each pole. How, uh, how long have you been carving? Um, I first started over 29 years ago, you know, just beginning learning to do this stuff. Full time as a wood carver for the past 12 years now. Okay, uh, what's the significance of this? The significance to this, um, well, Petersburg, this is the first for Petersburg, and there is a, a, a small native community here. Uh, Petersburg traditionally was a fishing camp. And, and then became established as a, as a community by the Norwegians. And um, the local natives just felt that it was time they had something of their own here. How long have you lived in Petersburg? I, I live in Sitka. I, I've been, I came here last September. I was here for seven months. Went home in, in April when the, the job was done. The pole sat here for the summer. Um, my tour season ended in Sitka, so I'm back to finish up putting them up now. What, uh, what do you think is important? Are you native? I am. Clinkett? I'm part Clinkett. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which clan? I'm um, Kaguantan, Eagle Bear. Okay. What, uh, what does this mean to you? What does it mean to me? Um, well, I understand the importance for the local natives here, the, what this is for them. This is their clan crest, their stories, who they are, where they're from, what they're all about. And it's, it's what it means to me is it's through them, what I, I'm, it was an honor for me to do these for, for them. I, I know the importance behind it for them. And When you're carving that, how, what are your feelings? What are you thinking about? Uh, the job at hand, what I'm working on, where I'm at. Um, the overall scope of what I'm doing and, and you know, imagining the outcome. Because yeah, I draw it up on paper first, design it there, work it out. But as you work it, the design, there are always things that change and, and you, you work it out. How many clans are represented? Oh boy, there's six on one, six, six or seven on the other, I believe. Do you know what they are? I, I know what they are, but... Uh, I think, I think George's going to cover that later here. Well, just for my purposes here, for riding, can you go ahead and tell me Right. Where they are? Well, the eagle pole is the one nearest the building. At the base is a split killer whale with a sea lion on the tail, a Sogway D. Above that is a Thunderbird perched on a, on a bentwood box. And then is Wushkitan, which is a shark, and the shark, uh, that Wushkitan clan, above that is another, is a... Above the shark is the wolf, and then just above the wolf is the eagle. That is all the eagle moi people. The raven pole, at the base of it, you really can't see it from this angle because it's in the, in the hole yet, but uh, it's a, a, a human-like face that's representing the, the spirit of the, the Nass River. It's, above that is a sea pigeon, uh, which is uh, 
Dakdin Tan, um, another clan. Kick Saudi frog above the sea pigeon. And then dog salmon. Above the dog salmon is a human riding in a canoe. See the bow of the canoe protruding out of the out of the pole there. And then double thumb, the mountain out here. And then raven. And that's all raven moiety pole. Why uh why do you think this is important? Especially for the young people. Well, a lot of the young people don't really know who they are or, or where their people are from, their stories. This hopefully will be a start to connect them to who they are and where their people are from and their genealogy, basically. So what's the cultural significance of this? Totem poles were created to tell a story. Uh, they were uh, a visual tool for telling a story. You had historians in the different clans and the historians knew the stories of the different the different poles, and this is basically the, the stories of all the clans of people that settled around this area or have used this area. Uh, anything you can think of that I might not have asked you about? What what's involved in carving this? What do you do? Well, initially somebody comes up with the idea, a story, or you know, the, the idea to do this, then, then they contact a person to see if they, if they will, you know, work up some ideas for this. They have the idea or give, give us a story. We create the designs to tell the story. And then from there, it's waiting, a lot of waiting, checking, seeing if uh, they're getting the log and if this is indeed gonna happen. And once they decide this is gonna happen, then the design really goes into full swing. Design the poll, get approval by, by the clan elders and the people that are uh, their stories being portrayed, and then from there, usually I do this at home in Sitka, carve it and then ship it out wherever, wherever they need to, need to go. But here I I came here and spent a lot of time working on on these along with some locals that volunteered to help out as well as Fred when he was here. Um, we all work hard at it. And, Okay, I just... Okay. I'm sorry, one more time. And look over here. Okay. I'm Clarence Jackson and I'm from Cape. Okay. And, uh, that way this one is good. There you go. Okay. You can't, can't shift on me because I'm over here. All right. All right. Uh, and you're a Clinkett, sir? I'm a Clinkett. Okay. Uh, you came all the way to Cape from Cape for this. Uh, what brings you? Well, they invited me to give a talk here this morning, this afternoon. And so uh, we came over this morning on a plane from Cape. What, uh, what are you going to be talking about? I'm going to talk about the people that are our family that that are represented on the totem pole, on, on, on all of the people that are the eagle moiety. And uh, I'll speak on their behalf very briefly because of the weather. and. Uh, thank the people that uh, sponsored this program and uh, tell them how much those people that that uh, are represented on the poll would have appreciated what they're doing today in Petersburg. What does this mean to the people that are represented on the poll? It means that they're finally they're, they're, they get recognized and their names are mentioned and they're memorialized on these totem poles. Each emblem on the pole represents a clan. And mine happens to be the killer whale clan, which, which uh, has a lot of my family here in Petersburg. What, uh, what's the significance of the totem pole? I beg up the significance the totem pole in this particular situation represents a memorializing the memory of those people that, are, that lived in Petersburg from day one. What, uh, what's it mean to you when you see this go up? What's well, it every time I look at the totem pole, I'm going to remember my family. I'm going to remember uh, people like Mrs. Keto, Lucy Keto, 
and Amy Hollingstead and the Hollingstead family that are gone. I'm going to remember people like Bill James and Ross Nanook and, and, and all of those people, um, Marie Reyes, you know, uh, and there was Willie Grant here in Petersburg. Uh, families that, that I'm tied to. Every time I see this poll, I'm going to remember them. And it's going to be a nice, uh, nice thing to see our clan standing here forever in Petersburg. And it, uh, it's a memorial to those people. Why do you think it's important that this was done in Petersburg? Well, you know, we've been involved in Petersburg since its beginning. Our people lived here. Uh, there was a man by the name of John Lott that lived very close here before uh, Mr. Bushman came to Petersburg. And uh, these people from Cake have been here.